Hello, this is Christian from Exacore Studio. I am the conductor of this company. And uh, welcome to this series of video tutorial called Board Game Design and Cone Monkeys. What this series covers is basically why and how to use a computer programmer to assist in your board game design process. I am not sure that this is generally done. I've seen nothing like this being done, so I decided to uh, give it a go and uh, share with the community. This first episode is called Why, and this video is the first of three parts as to uh, why use a computer programmer, why use a code monkey. And I, I hesitated before I used the term code monkey because it's often seen as derogatory, but um, I'm not I'm not using it in a derogatory fashion. I'm I'm just saying that you don't need an expert programmer. You don't need it. Doesn't need to be your job. Basically, if you're a, a script kitty and you're uh, you know you you've studied a little bit of programming in in uh, high school or college, uh, this is probably enough. But uh, I'll I'll cover this in. Uh, the specifics of it in, in uh, the other episodes, uh, mainly the how episodes. And this one covers why. And uh, this first part is about automated playtesting. With, uh, with automated playtesting, you can save yourself uh, a great, great deal of time and trouble by basically coding an, an algorithm that playtests your game. And uh, this can be uh, not only a time saver, but it can help you find problems with your games that appear only after a large number of games. And those may not come, those may not come obviously uh, during actual human playtesting. Uh, there's no question, of course, that this does not, absolutely not replace actual uh, human-based playtesting. A uh, computer won't tell you if your game is fun, but it can certainly give you a whole bunch of useful data. So um, let's get started. The example that I'll cover um, today uh, relates to Consonar, which is our first uh, board game release. It was just released this uh, past week. So uh, a lot of it, a lot of automated testing took place. Uh, it, it was really done rather fast to uh, to compete in the Game Crafter contest. So um, every step had to be made to save time on on playtesting. And automated playtesting played a crucial part in uh, in in balancing the game out and making sure it is uh, short, enjoyable, and balanced. So I will deal with a specific example, something that might not have showed up in uh, actual playtesting, but that showed up uh, with automated testing. Uh, let's start out in the rule book. Uh, if you look at this line, if the torpedo misses, he moves that torpedo card to his scoring area. And a little bit later, you get minus one point per torpedo card in your scoring area. This line was not in the original rules, and this line uh, was added as a direct result of automated testing. And I will talk about the process right now. So here you have the results of my run of automatic testing, a thousand uh, games, and a, um, this is the scoreboard. So you basically, out of a thousand games, had 434 draws, which is almost one out of two games, uh, 98 wins for the blue, 130 for the green, 165 for the orange, 44 for purple, 60 for red, and 69 for yellow. Now, two things are, are rather important. The number of draw, is, is really a problem here because you don't, basically you don't want your games to end in a draw. Let's bring in the, the players here, the player. These are the players. So you don't need to understand the code right now. This will be covered in the how, but this is what you should know. O, which is orange, 
uses a default player algorithm with which is a an AI that I've coded, which is which kind of knows what it's doing. I mean, you can't code an AI that's going to be as good as a, an actual player, uh, but you can get pretty close in a reasonable amount of time. And all the other players are basically completely random. As long as it's legal, they don't care. They just play cards at random. So basically, Orange should beat the crap out of all the other players. And Orange does not. So for a while, for a long while, I, I tweaked with the AI of Orange. I, I thought I could, I was just failing at coding a, a decent AI for this game. But as it turns out, nothing will beat a random player or actually not beat it that much because there is no penalty for failure. So if you know the game a little bit, you're, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'll just explain it quickly. Basically, you try and sync these submarines with a die. And basically, if you, if you roll and miss, there is no penalty. So the random players will just pound on it and pound on it and remove opportunities for the player who waits for a good shot. So basically, random players have almost as much chances of winning as the default players demonstrated here by the green. So, and the, the number of draw means that basically a lot of the random players simply used up all the torpedo cards and ended the game prematurely. The game was over in three turns, which is really, really fast. So, this needed to be fixed. The fix I tried to implement, uh, I tried a couple of, one, of fixes, but eventually the one that made it in the final rule gave different readings. I will... Uh, pause the recording and rerun the um, the simulation with the the little fix. I'll just show you in code for those who know a little bit about uh, Python. But again, I'll uh, I'll just um, explain this later. But by fixing this, by just adding this piece of code right here, I fix the game. And I'll I'll just pause it because it takes couple of minutes to run and I'll come back with the results. All right, we are back and uh, as you can see in a thousand games, the first thing you notice is the number of draws have gone has gone down uh, substantially from 400 something to 200 something. Uh, orange is now uh, the winner. It was still the winner, but this time it's a it's a little bit clearer, and uh, and a little bit more uh, constant. Uh, this shows up uh, over more games than a thousands, but um, he's still closely tailed by yellow. Uh, the thing is, since orange is the only one who knows how to play, uh, basically the uh, the sea of idiots uh, around him. Uh, tend to be more successful and if for example I would use only good players and one random then the random one would get totally beaten I've, I've tried this uh, a bunch of times so um, the games still are still over in three uh, mainly because the random players again really really mess the game up but with this rule they're messing it messing it up more systematically for themselves so they will not uh, ruin uh, a good um, a good player's strategy so this this is something that uh, maybe one or two uh, games would not have demonstrated uh, quite as well as as these automated tests so uh, right there, there, there's good value. There is also good value in the fact that since you have to code an AI, uh, even if it's just a very basic AI for your game players, then you, you still have to basically figure out player behavior in your head. And this is always important, uh, even before you play test it with uh, other players, to really get a sense of 
what your players' issues are, what they're thinking, what they want to achieve, their goal, etc. So, um, so there you go. Automated testing, a good opportunity to uh, uh, get yourself a cone monkey uh, and and involve him in uh, board game design. So uh, thank you for watching. This has been my uh, first uh, video tutorial. So uh, hopefully you've you've learned something, and uh, even even better, you'll uh, in the comment section below uh, teach me a thing or two. So uh, yeah, please comment and like and share, and uh, and let's see if we can um, find out more ways that code monkeys can be useful in board game design. So this is Christian, conductor at Exocore Studios, signing off.